Oksana Masters is a five-time Paralympian with four golds, three silvers, and three bronzes. I just don't want people's perception of me to change because they feel pity. What's crazy is, in Ukraine, I didn't know I was different. I don't want them to see me as, oh my God, I'm so sorry, you're so strong, that's incredible. I don't want those words at all. I'm not strong. I just lived my life, my only thing I knew. I didn't get in sports to like win everything. It was therapy for me. I thank them. One of the biggest things I'm most proud about myself is I never quit. If I could say something to my seven-year-old self, I would say, don't change a thing. Keep on fighting. It's gonna get easier. <laughs> like, it's gonna get a lot easier. This is not your forever. Please welcome Oksana Masters, interviewed by Carrie Champion. Thank you guys so much. Um, how's everybody doing before we get started? Good, good energy. Um, so just by way of background, I'm gonna do a bio. Uh, I've spent a little time with her backstage and her story is absolutely amazing. 17-time Paralympian. Oksana Masters was born 200 miles from Chernobyl three years after the nuclear disaster in Ukraine. She was born missing, obviously, certain, dis certain functions that she couldn't have. She had disabilities and as a result, we now know that you are a double amputee. Other issues as well, but you said not an issue for you, which is probably the most inspiring story. At seven years old, she was adopted from Ukraine by her mother, Gay, here in the States. So imagine being seven years old, having disabilities, if you will, and then getting here and not knowing how to speak English and having an entire new life presented to you. What would you do? And what she did was become an Olympian and her story is so amazing. Um, I love it, right? And that's what she did. That was her answer. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about your mother gay and what she meant to you. You say she literally saved your life. What does that mean? Oh my gosh, when I say my mom saved my life and that she's my hero, it's because she adopted me when I was seven and a half, and when I came to America, they said I probably would not have made it past 10 years old mm -hmm. because I was 34 inches, weighed 34 pounds, 36 inches tall, and that's a very healthy three-year-old, and I was about to turn eight. Mm. So I, I didn't really have, um, and mm. that was not just because of my disability, that was just because I was literally diagnosed as failure to thrive because I lived in three different orphanages in Ukraine and was bouncing around in. She changed my life. The only thing I ever wanted and dreamed of was a mom. Mm -hmm. I never I dreamed for a dad. I didn't dream for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> May, maybe a dog. And I... <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted a mom. I love and, it. And I got exactly my mom who adopted me as a single parent and changed my life. And you said, listen, she says this story about her mother. Her mother just wanted children. She didn't have that need to want to be married. She yeah. just wanted to have babies. So you guys were perfect for one another. Yeah, I honestly, like, it's just my mom is the most, um, she's my love story and my why and my mm -hmm. reason for everything. And, um, and she's the reason, like, I, sh like, I want to push myself and be the best to make sure that she knows she picked the right girl. Because I know she couldn't, she didn't have to. Is there any tissue? Where's the tissue? <laughs> Pass it around. Um, you, you get here, you can't speak English, but you said you were very opinionated and you had this inner strength, which I think is beautiful as you describe it. How do you decide that no matter what it, it looks like, I still want to compete at the highest level as an athlete? Um, so I was very opinionated from the start, but I didn't have the confidence in myself. And when I looked in the mirror, I never saw myself as an athlete because I, when people ask, like, who, who are you, did you, were your role models? Who did you look up to? Did you think you could ever be an athlete? No, because when do you guys get to see back in 2007 and 2002, like, people who look like me with prosthetics doing sports. I never saw it growing up, so I didn't know it was possible. Yeah. So I didn't identify myself as an athlete. But what I, that, res, that opinionated side, when I was in high school, 
I really started hating what I saw in the mirror and finally decided I used to wear my pants to cover up my legs and I hid everything, which made it worse because I'm bringing the wrong attention to, to my body and a negative one at that. And I decided it's because it's like society just put this stigma on me to not like who I am because mm. I'm different. Mm. And because just because maybe it's unfamiliar for them, they don't know how to act, doesn't mean I should change. And it kind of, that opinionated little seven-year-old Oksana wanted to help be that visible example yeah. for that little girl or boy of when they're looking in the mirror, it's okay to be different yeah. because that's what's actually making you irreplaceable in this world. Because yeah. if you look the same as every single person. Mm -hmm. And you your would... beauty and your shine inside <laughs> and out, like it's unbelievable. So you <laughs> had to be in this moment where you are. You talk about um, being, again, 17-time Paralympian. <laughs> And when you win gold, and you've won, you've medaled before, but when you win gold, you feel like, okay, I have arrived. Um, although that might have been just your perception. And then other uh, companies, different sponsorships come, and they say to you, we want you to be the face of this campaign. How does that translate for you? Because now you have an even bigger platform. <laughs> and, and, you, and you said to me, they see you. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Um, it's absolutely incredible because when I was going through my amputations, I had no idea what was possible. What, if I thought my life was over, like what could I possibly do? Because I didn't see, I wasn't seeing someone like me. I couldn't identify with that. And um, mm. when I, now looking back, it's just wild. First of all, like standing on the, on the gold medal in the middle of the podium, it's bittersweet and it feels selfish because I'm by myself and people see you up there, but there's an entire village. Mm. And what I love being able now with the brands that I've been so honored mm -hmm. <laughs> to go from sleeping out of my car to now being mm -hmm. having support of brands and people to see me mm -hmm. um, is I'm bringing awareness to my sports. I'm bringing awareness to kids with disabilities and also girls specifically with disabilities mm -hmm. that don't know what their outlet. My outlet was sports. Mm -hmm. It saved my life. My mom did, but sports was that other outlet for me. And um, showing that there's no right or wrong way mm -hmm. to be on the start line. Mm -hmm. And it, the start line doesn't care what you look like, yes, what right. color you are, what language you speak, where you come from, or what you yeah. have or don't have. And, and it's a new beginning, and it's undecided. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm chasing. And through me doing that, hopefully it's inspiring that next generation, yeah. but just anyone with disabilities seeing that, okay, she wants to ski, but she can take her legs off and ski. It's gonna look different, but she can do it, or she can ride her bike. And it's really important now to, I'm fortunate to be able to support what I do and able to get the equipment, but I know it's not possible mm -hmm. for 99% of the, mm -hmm. Paralympic athletes still out there that are, I'm just like a 2%. Yeah. And she competes in several events. That's what she was trying to say. As a multi-athlete, you're doing it all. <laughs> I'm a Gemini, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I blame it on. <laughs> Her birthday's coming up. We're going to sing Happy Birthday at the very end. Oh, boy. It's coming up soon, guys. I, I know everyone knows that song. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I, would, I would be silly if I didn't ask this question because we talked about it backstage. We know there is a war happening in Ukraine and I am sorry. Um, and I know that it affects you in a way in which it probably doesn't affect many of us here. Mm -hmm. What does support look like? What would you like to say to people um, while you have this moment? Um, well, so there's support for Ukraine where I, I felt so selfish. I did not want to go and compete. And what I chose to do was, if I was lucky enough to make it on the podium, I was going to donate parts of my proceeds from the medal earnings to Ukraine. And I chose an organization, No Child Forgotten, which is through um, Global Giving. And it's the Bright Kids Charity Fund, and it helps support kids specifically in Ukraine with disabilities mm -hmm. that are the most vulnerable in the war. And for me, that's what... I wanted to do something if I went and competed in Beijing. I wanted the start line to mean something more than just racing for myself, racing for my own goals that I was spending all these years to do. Because mm -hmm. I know how it feels to be that child with a disability in Ukraine forgotten. Mm -hmm. And it was really important for me to 
do it, and that's how I'm doing it, but there's so many different ways, and, you know, it's Ukraine, and the new, in the news, it was the wars 24-7 everywhere, and it still is, but I hope people don't lose sight that this is still, still happening, and yeah. it's happening fiercely, and I have hope. My mom says, she calls me a resilient rascal, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and um, because she says, like, I say, like, she taught me how to be resilient. She taught me how to be a fighter. And she said, I came that way because it was my Ukrainian heart. Mm. And that's how I know, like, I have hope that as a Ukrainian, I'm so proud of where mm -hmm. I come from and what sports can do that gives you the power to represent where you come from and who, what you can become. And we can all support, whether it's donating money, whether it's supporting eating at a local place where they're Ukrainian or mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. anything, a pin with Ukraine or just small things. It doesn't have to be big steps and it can be just small steps and yeah. keep um, believing and supporting in Ukraine. And I think it's something we don't realize that you yeah. can support money. You don't have to support just by money. Sure. You can support locally as well. I think we all support Oksana, do we not? Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I also feel like I haven't accomplished anything in my life when I hear oh her story gosh. in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna go outside and get something to do with myself. Her birthday, without telling all of her business, is coming up in just a few days. Just two <laughs> seconds, give us a minute. Happy oh, no. birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Oksana. Good, that was good. Happy birthday to you. Love you, sis.